Now even though there were a few pain in the ass level issues in this latest season of The Flash, some of which I'll probably end up doing videos on later to be honest, I think we can all agree that one of the biggest issues with this season's plot was Nora's over-reliance on time traveling. Or at least everybody else's reaction to Nora's over-reliance on time traveling. Seriously, why didn't anybody really care about Barry and Iris' future daughter running around in the present just doing whatever? I mean, Barry time traveled a bit in the first few seasons, then got beaten over the head with a whole season's worth of time travel bad messages back in season three. You can reset the timeline. You can try to fix it. But no matter how hard you try, it's never gonna be exactly how it was. Meanwhile, Nora literally went back in time like 50 times in one episode, could have potentially erased herself or changed history in a bad way, and she really only got talked to like once by Team Flash. At the very least, you'd think that screwing around with time that much would have attracted the attention of the Speed Force, right? Or maybe even the Legends? They're still doing hero stuff, right? Seriously though, as inconsistent as this show usually is, ignoring Nora's time traveling does seem like a really weird thing for the Speed Force to do, considering all the warnings we got about time traveling from a bunch of other speedsters on the show, on top of the fact that we've seen time rates and the Black Flash go chasing after speedsters for a lot less. So what gives? Well, it might have something to do with the fact that most of Nora's trips through time really aren't actually time traveling at all, at least as far as we've seen it. Instead, what we've been seeing is a different kind of time travel explained by Nora in the first episode of season five as time rewinding. I mean, I can, can do some cool things, you know? Sometimes I run so fast, I reverse time a bit. What's the difference exactly? Well, if you paid attention to any of the time travel scenes in The Flash, or really any of the Arrowverse shows, then you know that, normally, time travel works by basically jumping out of both time and space and putting yourself in whatever location you wanted to be at in the time period you were going to. It's pretty much like every other movie and TV show featuring time travel, meaning events are still playing out as they originally did in the timeline, only now there's another you there. That's why, for example, anytime Barry runs back to the day his mom dies, there's always another version of himself casually hanging around somewhere, like fighting the reverse flash, listening to his mom die, or just hanging around outside watching his parents before all hell breaks loose. The thing is though, traveling through time like this, interacting with past objects and past versions of yourself, friends, enemies, whatever, obviously also has the potential to alter the timeline with varying outcomes, meaning a speedster traveling through time could do something as simple as make a few changes to the previously established timeline, setting those new events as the proper history, or, if handled incorrectly, overriding everything and setting up a new timeline altogether. Going back to Barry being at his parents' house as an example, even without looking into it too hard, we can already see three basic timelines form over the course of the show's history thanks to speedsters messing around with time. The original, aka Season 1 timeline, where Eobard went back and killed Nora, forcing Barry to become the Flash early and setting off the events of the show. The Flashpoint timeline, where Barry went back and stopped Eobard from killing his mom in the Season 2 finale, leading to Nora surviving Eobard's attack and resulting in a present where Wally became the Flash instead of Barry. And the post-Flashpoint timeline, where Eobard corrected Barry's change from the Season 2 finale, leading to where we are in the show now. Obviously there's a lot more going on with time travel, especially in this show, but I think you get the idea. Going back in time, messing with stuff, can end up changing the future. Mind-blowing, isn't it? Rewinding time, on the other hand, is completely different. For one thing, it doesn't create new timelines or copies of yourself because you're not popping in and out of the time stream. Instead, as we've seen every time Nora rewound time, you're literally just turning back events as they originally happened, leaving you free to run around doing whatever it is you're trying to do. Remember rewinding VHS tapes or cassettes to either watch or listen to a movie or soundtrack? What? Seriously though, Nora's time rewind ability is pretty much like that, but working on a larger scale. Or if you're a little on the young side and you've never touched a cassette in your life, think about that part in Doctor Strange when Strange was fighting Kaecilius. Remember how he was rewinding time with the time stone and how everything was going back to the way it was? Either way, the point's the same. You're not exactly changing anything, you're just moving events back as they already happened. Really the only thing that kind of makes it like time travel is the fact that the speedster rewinding time isn't affected by it and can still move around freely, and they can apparently use it to go back as far as they need to, and they can manipulate stuff or interact with people and objects that they couldn't have before rewinding time. Saying it out loud, I guess it is a lot like regular time travel. Huh. Speaking of though, I'm sure some of you guys are probably like, but wait a minute comics, when Nora rewound time in earlier episodes, we've seen her do stuff like catching up to Barry or outrunning a time wraith when she definitely wasn't able to do that before, doesn't that make changes to the timeline too? And that's true on both counts, but here's the thing. 
As we saw in the Cause and Excess episode, any changes you make after rewinding time don't create new timelines, because, as far as the timeline's concerned, everything's going the way it always did. That's why Nora could keep reliving the same hour over and over again, with everybody saying the same stuff and acting the same way, while trying to stop Cicada and keep Team Flash alive, or why Barry didn't notice that he almost punched out the Star Lab satellite by himself in the Season 4 finale, We Are the Flash, before Nora rewound time to help him. Again, you're not jumping around through time, you're not altering things unnaturally, you're technically always giving yourself a fresh start to fix whatever it is you messed up without all the negative side effects of normal time travel. So there you go, time rewinding made simple. Now as for how Eobard knew that Nora rewound time in the season finale, considering how the timeline from his perspective never really changed, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, it's not exactly like he managed to scribble anything down in that Speed Force language beforehand, right? Oh well, maybe just chalk this one up as a plot hole. Either way though, that ability does seem pretty useful. I mean, time travel without a ton of the consequences you'd normally get while fucking around with the time stream? You'd think Team Flash would've wanted to train Nora specifically so they could take advantage of that against Cicada way earlier than they did. Kinda like when they got a hold of Devo's chair, or the Tachyon generator. Huh, I think I'm seeing a pattern here. Seriously though, I guess it doesn't really matter now since it's not exactly like Nora's gonna be able to do anything with it, right? But anyways guys, that's my take on how Nora's time rewind ability worked in Season 5 of The Flash. If you guys agreed with anything I said in this video, or if you have your own thoughts you want to throw out there, then go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I will see you all next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, then go ahead and click that like button, and if you're new, maybe consider clicking that subscribe button too. I've also got links to my Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and Patreon in the description. You should probably check those out too. And if you want to see more of my content, then you can click the link to my last video. It's right there in the middle of your screen. Alright, and I will see you all next time.